People always ask me, how do I become a top Rubik's Cuber? And while I'm not a top Cuber myself, I just like to cosplay as one, I do know a thing or two about how the top Cubers manage to get where they are, so I thought I'd share that with you all today. Starting out, you have to learn how to solve the cube, that's easy, 10 minutes, and after that, go on to the CFOP method. This is sort of a given, no Rubik's Cube method other than CFOP has set a world record in the modern era of cubing. Not that it can't be done, but your best bet is going with what's proven to work. There are 78 algorithms you have to learn, which sounds really bad, but the beginner version only has 16 algorithms. This gives you plenty of time to use a mental technique called the sunk cost fallacy, where you tell yourself it's not that bad and end up learning hundreds of algorithms anyway. So once you learn the CFOP method, you'll know what turns to do on the cube. But the only way to go very fast is to do look ahead. This is where you're turning to solve some pieces, but at the same time you're looking away from those pieces in order to find which pieces you have to solve next. That way you can start on your next step without having to pause. The advice you'll commonly hear for us mere mortals is to turn slow and look ahead. Otherwise you can't really see anything. And while that's true for us, you may be questioning that advice when you watch the top cubers and you see just how fast they're turning. Well, the reason they can still look ahead when they're turning faster than you've ever turned in your entire life is because for them, this is their slow turning. Before you start an official solve, you are given 15 seconds to look at the cube, and this is called inspection time. When you're starting out, you want to use your inspection time to find your first few moves that you're going to do, maybe the entire cross, but once you get better at this, you want to start planning even more, like an X cross, or plan your first F2L pair, or second pair, or sometimes, in a very lucky solve, even your third pair. This means that before you start turning, you have to be able to visualize what all of your moves are going to do to all of the relevant pieces. Now, I know 15 seconds doesn't sound like a lot of time to plan this all out, but once you see how fast a chess pro can find the best move in a complex position, you'll realize just how hopeless you really are. So you're averaging maybe 6 seconds, but that only puts you at top 100 level, and definitely not in contention for a world record holder. Now you might be wondering, how can I stand out from the crowd and take my cubing skills to the next level? As with most things, there is not just one answer, so I'll give you a few options for what to do here. One way you can gain an advantage over the competition is to do something that none of them are doing. We've seen this before with world record holders. Mats Valk was one of the people who developed VLS, or Valk Last Slot, which is a way of solving your last F2L pair while skipping OLL. Timon Kolosinski took the complex idea of pseudo-slotting and practiced it so much that his solves just take less moves than most people's. And Felix Zemtegs, by himself, invented, developed, and mastered the technique of zeroing. Now, since this guy already ruined the fun by revealing everyone's secrets, I guess you'll have to come up with something new on your own. Be Chinese this is a bit of a tough one. I mean, if you're not Chinese, that's obviously not your fault, it's your parents' fault. But you don't have to lose hope, at least not in this life. If you practice a religion, such as Buddhism, where you believe that after you die you will come back as another life, then you are probably already Chinese and you should stop practicing religion and start practicing cubing. Now if you've seen me before, you might be wondering, hey, you're Chinese, why are you not a top cuber? Am I not? I was born and raised in Canada my whole life. I started cubing when I was 10 years old, and when I showed some talent for it, my parents were so happy that I finally found something I could do by myself so they could finally take a break from the endless nightmare that is being a parent. But if I had grown up in China, then the moment my parents witnessed me do a single finger trick on the cube, I would have been sent away to take private lessons 8 days a week, and I would disappoint my parents every time I don't get the world record. And this is only if I was their favorite child. If neither of these options sound great, then you can also have your mom scramble for you. We've seen Max Park have great success with this technique. This increases practice time, it simulates a competition environment where you don't actually scramble for yourself. The thing is, this may be a hard piece of advice to follow, because most of us can't even get our mom to buy us a new cube, let alone learn to cube and sit with us for hours as we disappoint them. Everyone's a little bit different, so make sure to experiment with the tips I've given you here today and let me know in the comments which one of these worked best for you. So hopefully that gives you a good roadmap on how to become a top cuber. 
Or if you're as old as I am and you already have that dream shattered, well now at least you can answer the question, why are you not a top cuber? And the answer is your mom.